Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Given that I've covered accounts of man-sized spiders, pterosaurs living in the British countryside, and half-human, half-owl hybrids on this channel, you might get the impression that I only choose to cover the silliest cryptids on purpose. And to an extent, that is true. However, there are a few mystery animal accounts that convince me more than others, and one of these originates from New Zealand. For several centuries, reports of an unknown semi-aquatic mammal have emerged from New Zealand's South Island. This creature has come to be known as the Waitariki, and is described as being brown-furred and otter-like, roughly the size of a domestic cat. The legs are said to be short and set close to the body, while the tail is long and somewhat flattened. If such a creature does exist, and isn't a representative of an introduced species, then it would be of great significance as modern New Zealand lacks indigenous mammals apart from bats and pinnipeds. However, fossil finds from the Miocene St. Bathan site suggest that a unique and endemic lineage of mammals once dwelt here. The so-called St. Bathan's mammal was a small, mouse-sized creature with semi-sprawling limbs and likely an insectivorous diet. It was fairly basal, being more derived than monotremes, but less so than multituberculates or therians. Why the St. Bathans mammal lineage died out is uncertain, but perhaps a specialised ancestor lingered on into modern times in the rivers of the South Island. Anyway, reports of terrestrial mammals native to New Zealand that are neither bats or pinnipeds date back several centuries. The oldest written account of an animal that might relate to the Waitariki was made by Captain James Cook in 1772. Cook's account reads as follows. For three or four days after we arrived at Pickersgill Harbour, and as we were clearing the woods to set up our tents, a four-footed animal was seen by three or four of our people, but as no two gave the same description of it, I cannot say what it was. All, however, agreed that it was about the size of a cat, with short legs and of a mousy colour. One of the seamen, and he who had the best view of it, said it had a bushy tail. The most probable conjecture is that it is a new species. Be this as it may, we are now certain that this country is not so destitute of quadrupeds as was once thought. Later, in 1844, some Maori fishermen at the mouth of the Clutha River described to J.W. Bencourt and Dean Munro, a beaver-like animal which inhabited the lake at the river's source. These stories were also heard by W. Mantell four years later. Mantell, who was a politician and naturalist, interviewed a Maori man named Arawata, who claimed to have seen a strange, unidentified animal. Mantell stated, He informed me that the length of this animal is about two feet from the point of the nose to the root of the tail. The fur grizzly brown, thick short legs, bushy tail, head between that of a cat and a dog, lives in holes. The food of the land kind is lizards, of the amphibious kind, fish. It does not lay eggs. Meanwhile, German-born New Zealand explorer Julius von Haast took the existence of the Waitariki for granted. He claims to have come across otter-like tracks on the upper part of the Ashburton River in Canterbury province. Haast goes on to state that the animal itself was observed by two gentlemen who owned a sheep farm near Ashburton, 2,100 feet above sea level. They described the animal as being dark brown, the size of a big rabbit. When hit with a whip, it made a whistle-like sound and disappeared into the water. German zoologist Alfred Brehm included a short description of the Waitariki in the monotreme chapter of his famous Brehm's Tierleben an early and popular book of zoology. The passage reads, Another interesting creature among the most primitive mammals is the only indigenous New Zealand mammal, the Waitariki, an otter-like animal which has been seen several times, once from such a short distance that it was hit with a whip, but then it disappeared into the water. Haast saw its tracks in the snow. Yet no one was able to catch the animal so far. It is thought that this mammal is more primitive than the monotremes, and will put some new light upon the ascent of the class which ends with man. How Brame could determine that the animal was more primitive than monotremes, without access to an actual specimen, I have no idea. Sightings of the creature dropped to almost nil after the late 1800s. That was until 1968, 
when an otter-like animal was spotted leaving the Stephenburn stream near the Wakia River in the Southland district. The animal reportedly checked the area as it emerged from the stream, then signalled to three other semi-adult individuals, which followed it up the bank and disappeared into the undergrowth. 1971 brought another report, this time from the Hollyford River area. A hunter heard splashing as he neared the river, and upon investigation he saw an animal very similar in form to an otter scaling the riverbank, and sliding back down again as if it were playing. He witnessed this performance for about 15 minutes before the animal left. Based on several eyewitness descriptions of the creature, investigators have suggested four main theories as to what this thing might be. The first, and most popular of these theories, suggests that the Waitariki is a form of river otter. Reported sightings of the creature often point out several physical characteristics which are very otter-like. However, the fact remains that no known species of this mammal is native to New Zealand, and it is not known whether otters were introduced to the country during the 19th century. A second theory suggests that the Waitariki is a form of beaver, as some sightings indicate the presence of dam-like structures in the rivers and lakes of New Zealand. Again, we must look at the fact that no known mammals like this are indigenous to New Zealand, and it's highly unlikely that any explorer or ship would have brought a creature such as a beaver with them on long voyages. Thirdly, it has often been presented that the Waitariki is a possible form of pinniped, marine mammals that include seals, sea lions and walruses. Their distribution is worldwide, and the general description of the animal tends to match these. This theory, however, does not explain the otter-like tracks reported. There has also been the suggestion that the Waitariki is a monotreme of some sort, similar to Australia's platypus. Some reports do state that the creatures lay eggs, and, as some translations would have it, the name Waitariki actually means bone spur, a feature which is present on the ankles of male monotremes. But that seems to be where the similarities end, and as we have seen above, all of these sightings are based on no physical evidence whatsoever. None of the reported sightings describe the presence of a bill, with the head and jaws sounding rather more conventional and less specialised. Again, an identity as a representative of an ancient endemic mammal lineage would make more sense, as the Miocene St. Bathans mammal also lacked a bill. However, this is merely speculation on my part. So is there any physical evidence of the Waitariki's existence at all? Julius von Haast reportedly obtained a pelt of a Waitariki in 1868. It was in poor shape, but is described as brown with white spots lacking webbing between the toes. Unfortunately, this does not offer definitive proof of the existence of the animal. In all likelihood, the skin was of a variety of quoll, which were released in New Zealand in 1868. Quolls are carnivorous marsupials native to Australia, of which all known species have a somewhat brownish coat and can be distinguished by white spots on their skin. Additionally, some of the reports could be misidentifications of known animals. Small fur seals could have possibly been misidentified and could be the origin of reports of the Waitariki from more coastal areas. Another possibility is that the earlier reports, prior to the 1800s, are those of something genuinely unknown but the more recent ones are most likely of an escaped animal kept captive during the colonisation of New Zealand by Europeans. In addition, common brush-tailed possums, which were introduced to the islands by European settlers during the 1850s as a source of food and to provide fur for clothing, may have inspired some of these sightings. These semi-arboreal marsupials forage in the trees, but construct burrows on the ground in which to sleep, and possess brown fur, long tails, and are roughly cat-sized. However, reports of the Waitariki describe an animal at home in the water, which contrasts with the more terrestrial possums. So, if an alien species was released into the 1800s, then the more recent sightings may be associated with such an animal. We know that many creatures were introduced into New Zealand at this time, including ferrets, weasels, and stoats all of which show similarities associated with the later Waitariki reports. With the absence of any hard evidence, the identity of this mystery cryptid will likely remain obscure. I do think that the Waitariki is one of my favourite cryptids, and one of the most plausible, given that the creature is not an enormous prehistoric reptile, or a six-foot bird man with glowing eyes and supernatural powers. 
In the end, I agree with the speculative interpretation of the Waitariki given by Darren Naish and John Conway in their Cryptozoologicon, in which the animal is presented as a semi-aquatic basal mammal unique to New Zealand, much as the platypus is to Australia. Hopefully someone will capture a specimen one day, although in my heart of hearts I doubt this will happen. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Proterochampsians, a group of somewhat crocodile-like archosauriforms from the mid to late Triassic. See you again soon. Cheerio.